Beginner mistake number one is working on a giant canvas, like 4K or even 1080p. Adobe Animate uses vector graphics, which means that you can scale your drawings as much as you want without losing any quality. I personally usually work on a 960 by 540 canvas, which is half of 1080p. And then when I'm done with animation, I will just export the file at whatever size I want, whether that's 1080p or 4K. You might also want to consider this if you find that Adobe Animate is lagging or you're running out of hard drive space. Beginner mistake number two, you've closed your shape perfectly. You can't see any holes or gaps, but for some reason, the paint bucket just isn't filling it. This could be one of two things. With your drawing tool selected, go into the properties panel and make sure that object drawing mode is turned off. If it's highlighted like this, it means it's turned on. And when it's turned on, anything that you draw will be put inside its own drawing object, which is what you're seeing here with all of these blue bounding boxes. Drawing objects give you a lot of flexibility, but because each shape is self-contained, your drawing isn't technically closed. A good example of a closed shape is a circle and an open shape is something like this where there's a gap. The solution to this is to break apart the drawing objects. You can do this by selecting the drawing objects, going up to modify and selecting break apart or using the shortcut command B. You can see that the blue bounding boxes have now disappeared and the shapes have now combined into a single closed shape that can be filled by the paint bucket unless you have the shapes on different layers. This is beginner mistake number three. This shape might look closed, but if I go down to the timeline and turn off this layer, you see that it actually isn't. Part of the shape is on a different layer. The easiest way to fix this is to put all the shapes on the same layer. And I just did that by copying and pasting. If I try the paint bucket now, you can see that it works perfectly. But if for some reason you really want to keep them on separate layers, here's what I would do. Turn off the other layers, select the classic, not the classic brush tool, the paint brush tool, this one specifically with the Y shortcut, and then pick a random color in the properties panel. I'm going to pick red because that's very bright and different. And also make sure the object drawing mode is turned off as we talked about before. And now I'm going to draw a line to close this shape. Now that it's closed, you can fill it with the paint bucket. Um, we'll use that green, same one as before. Now the reason I've asked you to specifically use this paint brush tool is because it draws using strokes. I can double click to select the entire stroke and then just press delete and it's gone. It doesn't affect the rest of the drawing. Now to color in the rest of the shape, you can just repeat the process on the next layer. As you can see, you might have to play around with it a little to get it to look perfect, but that's the basic process. Keep in mind that you can also use other stroke based tools like the line tool or the pencil tool or even the pen tool. To learn more about the difference between stroke based tools and fill based tools, click the link in the top right or the description. If you've made any of the mistakes in this video, it might help to know that I did as well and sometimes still do. Let me know in the comments if you like this video, if you want more like this one, because I've got a very, very long list of common mistakes, most of which I've learned by making them myself. As always, thank you for watching and goodbye.